So I'm working on a uh, game score um, for John Wick, and um, uh, the composer is Austin Wintry, so I'm putting down guitars and bass on it, maybe a little baritone, and I'm just pulling up my bass tone, and uh, printed up the charts. You can see I turned the MIDI into music, now that's reversed, I see, but a lot of notes. Um, and I just do it in kind of chunks. Most of this is there'll be bass for 10 bars, and then 100 bars later, there'll be some more bass. So it's, it's I just kind of do it in, in those chunks. And I'm doing the bass. There, so I'm going to punch in where I left off. Um, oh, yeah, get some flash here. Again, going a little sooner. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Hopefully, you can hear. It's not particularly exciting. <laughs> it's a little bit like watching paint dry, but I'm gonna to try to explain what I'm doing as I go. Uh, so I'm gonna punch in again on the bass uh, a little sooner than I did before. So the track merges. Um, let's see, 10. that and then I could punch in right where it changes. So this is for John Wick, the video game. Um, let's see, where am I? Bar 16. Let me see. Um, God, I was playing a five string. Hey, James. Hey, Mark. Uh, sometimes I forget I'm playing a five string, and I think this is the bottom string. And I'm using a pick on this section. On the next section, I think I will just use my fingers. But on this section, we want it really punchy, so I'm using a pick to kind of give it a little bit more oomph. Um, so 115. No. Did I play it right? Listening back. Yeah, I played it right. Okay. So punch in. Um, and let's see, get more of that going on there. All right. Um, and then I'm going into a volume pedal and I'm going into a multi comp, an EBS pedal called multi comp. It's for bass. And actually, it's not on right now. Yeah, I don't really need it. It's, a, it's just a little, I like a little compression sometimes. Okay, so that's what it is. Okay, Let's see if I can get this down. Okay. 
turn the piano up a little bit. And what I also have is I have the MIDI track and I have it on piano so I can play along with that too if I'm having trouble hearing the rhythm. <laughs> Play it a little softer, but I think it's okay. Let me check. Soloing. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm late on that note, so I'm going to do that again. So I've got a solo mode. Um, Better save. Yeah, it's definitely not doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah, it's not going to work. I have to re. I have to restart it. Or at least restart the session. Let me try that. Also, I find if I close a lot of things. Uh, other apps, it helps. Let me just try reopening the app and see. Okay, I know this is boring. Oh my gosh, you guys are dying, I'm sure. Um, so this is a cheap Squire uh, five-string bass, uh, but for this kind of stuff, it's perfect. It doesn't need to be amazing. All right, so let me try this again. Let's see what's up? Ooh, did I get it? That's actually really hard. It's so syncopated. Everything else that's going on has nothing to do with what I'm doing. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna solo this and see. Yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna flatten and merge that, and now I'm gonna to go to the next section. <laughs> Actually, what I'm gonna do now, so I've had a few people ask me, you know, how I work and what, you know, how, how it, I do what I do. Um, so right now I'm naming, the track, actually, bass, um, and then I name the track, uh, I right click on it, export audio, and then I add the bar, um, it starts at bar 107, so what I do is I go MM, which means measure 107, so that Austin knows where to drop that um, bass part in. If he drops it at measure 107, it'll line up with everything. Um, and, and that way I don't need it to start it at, I don't need it to start at zero or one or whatever. Okay, now there's some more bass on this MIDI track. Way here, over here, at measure 264. <laughs> this is a long cue. I mean, how long are we, when I get to the end of this thing, huh? it's about 10 minutes, actually more, it's 11 minutes long, this cue. So this is for a video game, it's uh, for John Wick, the, the movie John Wick is for the video game. Uh, so now I'm gonna. Okay, we'll see. Now, when I'm done with the chart, I throw it on the ground. Okay, the next thing. And so what I'll do is I'll kind of look at this and see if there's anything. Um, when I get in the zone, I can pretty much sight read stuff, but. But 
Austin stuff is very difficult to cipher because he never does two bars the same way. And he doesn't have, oftentimes there's not tonal center. So I'm not like in the key of F minor and every note's going to be in the key of F minor. It could, any note is, it's 12, all 12 notes are on the table with Austin. So uh, reading is a challenge. Two, three, four. Bass clef. I am reading bass clef, just so you know. And I'm reading bass clef for a five string, so I'm having to read. So here's the chart that I printed up from his MIDI. So it lines up with his MIDI. It's not an artist, uh, Patrick. It's uh, it's a game. I think you probably heard that, right? Uh, but it's a game, John Wick. The game, so I'm just doing guitars on it. Um, let's see, it is pretty cool. Though. This is pretty minimalistic here. Now, now that I listen to this, it sounds like he's up an octave. Um, but it's written down an octave. Weird. See what I said? <laughs> B flat, F sharp, F, C sharp, C. <laughs> Austin. I love him so much. He makes me work. I love it. Oh, oh that was a C. But I have a gap I can punch in there. Uh, 268. Yeah, so that was, that's an F. I should have gone to F. Let me see if I can punch in here. It might work. Actually, I'm going to go back. See, with Logic, I don't know if you can see my screen very well, but um, if I punch in too late on the file, um, it just creates a new file. And then it's like, oh, okay, now I gotta chop it, chop it, and I gotta crossfade it. It's not as easy as if I um, uh, start a little earlier, and then what it does is it creates a file that I, a comp file, and that I can just slide the, the the crossfade around, get it in the right spot, and then merge it, and it's a lot faster. It's a lot easier. Um, so that's just a little quirk of logic. I'm not sure why it doesn't immediately go into comp mode. And sometimes it does. Sometimes I can start right at the end of a file and it'll create a comp track, but a lot of, most of the time it doesn't. So I have to kind of go back for So I'm going to punch in here, like it's going to start recording here, but I'm probably not going to start playing until here. And then I'll slide it over. You know, and I can, I don't know if you, like I said, you can't really see that very well. If you're working, watching on a phone, you really won't be able to see it. But okay, let me, uh, let me see where I was here. So. Uh, okay, cool. I might be able to get to the end on this one. Right. Concentrate, Don. See, <laughs> I didn't concentrate. I know you're all watching me. It's making me nervous. Uh, that was, I didn't like the sound of that note. somewhere okay so now here's what I'm talking about I didn't play right away okay 
I didn't play right away. See, if you can see this, there's my old performance, previous performance, and here's my new one. And I didn't play. I just, I, I just needed it to do this so I can go slide this over. Automatically creates a crossfade. I go ahead and merge. I could save all the merges to the end. It would probably save time, but but eventually that comp track just keeps going further, further down, and I, then I can't really see what I've done. It just gets a little tougher to see what I've done. Okay, so now I'm looking for a gap because um, I didn't like. It was something I didn't dig. Okay, that's good. There, I don't dig that. That was a little muddy. Uh, so I'm going to go in here, or right in a little gap right after 275. So I find it on the chart, and I'm basically just going to go. Uh, no. Oh, I see. I, I assumed he's going to go to an E natural there. I assumed it was E flat. I cannot do that with Austin because <laughs> he won't stay diatonical. Yep. See that? Okay. So this is for John Wick uh, video game. So you may hear. See, there's that E natural. So, yep, indeed. Okay, so I got to remember E natural there. All right. Um, what did I say? 275. Let's see. Oh, weird. That was late. But I can merge that and punch in because there's lots of gaps. Anytime you have a gap, it's an easy punch in. Bass is hard to to, to punch in on if you, if it's kind of in the middle of a phrase. Yeah. I go here, yeah, right before two seventy nine. practicing. One thing I do, uh, in fact, I did it yesterday. If, he's not watching this, I know, so he won't know. But yesterday, I uh, 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 I generally, on uh, every score we work on together, at some point on the acoustic guitar track, I will, right before I start playing, I will whisper, I love you, Austin. <laughs> just, just, to, just to kind of, because I know he's probably mixing the, these things at 2 in the morning. He's, like, exhausted, just to give him a laugh. Well, one time, I think the first time I did it, he had he was mixing in 5.1, and so he was surrounded by sound, and he didn't even look at the file. He just immediately took the track, and he painted over behind his left shoulder, and he said he was in the studio at 3 in the morning, and all of a sudden he hears behind him, he sees, I love you. He hears, I love you, Austin, and he just jumped out of his skin, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry, but actually he thinks it, he, it actually is a game now because he, just last time I did it to him, he took a screenshot of the file and he saw a little little bump in the uh, sound file and he goes, highlighted and said, suspect. <laughs> so you got to sometimes entertain yourself. You know, this whole business used to be a very um, uh, people person kind of job because you would be you would have to work with other musicians and it's a very solitary job now it's very very different if you like I mean it used to be the people that would excel in session work 
they were bars. So I'm going to bounce this. Um, were the kind of people that could you, that were good hangs. They would hang out and you know they would have jokes at the ready. And um, and nowadays, I mean, almost all of my work I do this way. I'm by myself and I'm just kind of chopping away at parts. Okay, so I'm done with bass. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. Uh, I think. No, oh, that I don't have to do. So this, we've already done half of this. I'm just, he sent me the second half and I'm doing, okay, so I got to do this. This He calls it seven string, but I'm not doing seven string. I'm just playing regular guitar. So listen to this. I'm going to pull out that piano bass. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Trying to find the rhythms in there is sometimes very difficult, but once you get it, once you get it laid in there, it all makes sense and works well. Let's see, seven, okay. So this is the part for the seven string. So just that much, how many bars is that? One, two, three, just four bars. All right, I'm gonna swap, uh, actually I'm gonna use this guitar, this, the Gino, so. There's actually steel string in there. I don't even know if you can hear it, but you'll probably mix it up. Uh, let's see, I gotta pull that guitar down though. That's annoying. Oh, that's not me. That's the sample. That's not my sound. That's the sample. Okay, so this is the sound I have for this. Yeah, sounds great, doesn't it? Where the heck is it? Oh, that's right. Come on, there we go. Uh, so I got, yeah, there we go. It's super gamey. Um, I may not even be able to play this. Okay, so, um, and it seems like it's pretty hot. So I'm gonna solo. He, he bounces the guitar separately so I can listen to him. So, but, yeah, so I think. Like I said, it's not that uh, Does it get that? Is it up the Maybe it's up there. Crazy or what? Sorry, I'm not I'm not moderating much here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Patrick missed it. Uh, I was sidetracked right when you talked about it. Thanks. Oh no, you I, you not, may not have missed. It. I don't know. Sometimes I have to kill out all the other apps. Yes, yes. No, I I've got. Do I have anything up there? Well, yeah, I've got. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, some stuff I got to keep track of, but yeah, some of the stuff I don't need open. Yeah, it, it's I, it's been ever since I updated Logic, I've been having issues. Um, in fact, it it's in fact I, it's I'm glad Logic has auto save now, like Pro Tools has had forever. Um, uh, Pro Tools is crazy. I think it's it saves as you're recording. It's just like brilliant. But um, the uh, but Logic didn't do that for years, and so I would lose so much stuff because it would crash, and I, I hadn't saved in an hour, and you're like, oh no. It's like the worst feeling. Okay, so this is, I don't think I'm to play. Okay, so, so it's, so what's written is, uh, let's see, I gotta play it down an octave than what's written. And the lowest note is a D, so I don't have a D. So I got a drop D on this. So then I have to read. 
trusty tuner out. Option T opens the tuner. And I think I can do this one in two different chunks. Because And a lot of times, if it's very awkward, I'll memorize it. It's, it's, it's not very long, so I can easily memorize it. But I'm a good reader, so. But see, I mean, literally, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let's see, do I have F? Uh, yeah, eight, nine, nine pit, different pitches. Um, so it's not in any one cent, tonal center. So, okay, sorry, this is kind of boring. But, uh, so, oh, am I restricted from improvising? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Uh, with this composer, with Austin Wintry, he likes everything pretty much written out. Um, a lot of things that he wants from me is that he wants the guitar-esque type stuff that he can't really, as a keyboardist, he doesn't really uh, think about. Um, so he wants to, otherwise you could just use samples if, if you're not going to kind of give some special sauce on it. Um, but for a lot of composers, I do a lot of improvising. It's kind of a either or thing. I mean, when I work for Stephen Barton, who I work for all the time, and uh, we've I've done all the guitars on Apex Legends. I don't know if any of you have played Apex legends yet but i did all the guitars on that and all of that was improvised um so he just sends me the tracks of what he's doing which are just monstrous and then he just wants me to just mess it up and do crazy stuff and so i have a blast with that. it's like being a mad scientist um you can see i've got i don't know if you can see i got all sorts of things on my desk and anything could create a noise you know anything ebo and slides and different picks and all sorts of crazy things so um uh so that's what I do with it. But with, but with this, no, this is very, Austin's very specific about the notes he wants generally. Um, sometimes he'll tell me um, he doesn't want specifically that or something like that, but that's almost harder because then I'm like, because the tonal centers aren't very predictable on this music, I can't really, it's not, you, it's not like you can do jazz over this, you know? So let me get this first one. Get that and I'll do the second half. Yeah, I didn't like the way I got the D note. It wasn't very strong. That's a very wide guitar sound. Uh, it's very gainy. This is my uh, Gibson SG, 70s Gibson SG. Totally painted and ruined and everything, but I didn't do it. I just bought it like this. I like these kind of guitars. They're cheaper because somebody totally ruined them. Um, uh, and it's also, I've got like 
doubling on it. So it's it's kind of got this wide slip knot kind of vibe to it. Um, so let me do the second half. Now I got the D. Always checking my tuning. Got my tuning right now. It starts with that. Now see, I don't know if you can see this, but look, it created a new file. It didn't merge, so I gotta now I gotta go in and do the merge myself. I let me listen to that, make sure it was okay. It sounded okay. A little pitchy, I thought, but let me see. I think I dug in too hard. I think I'll do it again. And I will hopefully yeah, I will hopefully. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in record a little sooner and then I'll just move the fader over. Okay, try this again. Yeah, I like the way I laid back those triplets though. That was kind of cool. All right, so now I'm cross. I'm sliding that over and I'm crossing the cross fade. Now I'm the solo. <laughs> You can hear no tonal center there. It's really cool. Austin writes some of the coolest lines, but not easy to play. Okay, so now, name the track. Okay, I'm sure this is boring. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm boring a lot of. Um, okay, just checking to see if I have to catch up on some questions there. Feel free to ask questions. I put the let my this is my laptop, so I put it over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Normally, I I would do the live from the I'm at. Okay, 107. Audio file. Okay. Measure MM 107. So that's, he knows where to drop it. Save it in the folder. Do I have it? Okay. Done with that chart, throw it on the floor. Right, there's, a, there's some weird stuff here. What's this? Okay, I gotta do that now. So let's call PC bar 107. Where are you? Oh, it's back here. There it is. Okay, let me listen to this. Let's see if I need drop eight. Okay, this is probably power chords. Oh no. Oh, it doubles the bass. Well, that's good, because I already did this. Oh no, it's turn down what I just did because I don't want to distract me too much because it's very different than that. But I'm going to turn the bass up because I'm playing along with the bass. Except for the very end, I'm playing along with the bass. So this is, okay. And different sound, sorry. And I've got to go, hmm. oh, that's right, okay. Enable. Wow, that's really wide. Holy cow. <laughs> I forgot I did this sound. Okay, so we got. Back in there, turn down a little bit. And I'm kind of muting it too. Okay, ready? I think that was pretty good. Let me listen to it. Soloing. Okay. I'm going to punch 
punch in right there because that was supposed to be um, supposed to have a pickup in there. So that's bar 108, but I just need to go, no, I'm sorry, 110. I just need to go in for just a second. Right? There's the downbeat. Yeah, so I'm, that's where I miss it. Oh, wait, I got it there. What was I thinking? Let's see again. Nah, where's the click? Let me get the click. No, I didn't. Okay, I didn't. So, okay, so it's got to go in a little sooner. And I just need to punch out right away. So, um. ah. save. Okay, I don't need any of that. I just need the first bit. So I'm gonna switch this over. It's this over, and there it is, soloing, listening. Yep, okay. So I can flatten and merge that and move on to the one part at the end where I just got the bass and the guitar don't do the same thing at the end, so that's what hurt me. Um, so it's... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I think I got it. Let me listen. Now, can I crossfade in there? I don't see any place I can really. Ah, yeah, I can crossfade right here. It spread out the file really big, and it's just move this over. And I think that that's a little tight. Let me listen and see. I solo it usually if I'm gonna. Yeah, I don't think you can do that. So that's pretty good crossfade. And I set my crossfade to 20 milliseconds. You can set it to whatever you want, but I, I like 20 milliseconds. That was the fault for gears. Now they changed it to zero. All right. I know this is boring, but okay. So this is renaming the track. I'm going to bounce it 107, bar 107. So I, yep, bounce 107. And that way he knows where to drop it. He doesn't need to. Drops it measure 107 and it'll line up with all of this. Okay. Chart's done, throw it in the trash. Um, let's see. What am I gonna do next? I got some baritone stuff. The telly lead. So this is kind of cool. Let me see where this is. This is real close to here. I'm gonna turn this down, turn it off. Um, let's go to the telly lead. Here we go. And I'm gonna get my telecaster. We'll set, I'm gonna set this here and grab my telecaster. There it is. All right, so um, this tone is different. Enough showing off. Stop it, Tom. Okay, so bar, where's this one? So bar 117. I'm gonna go 117. I, I've got the so if I need to hear what the piano, you know, what the MIDI file sounds like, I've got it right here. So listen, I'll solo that so you can hear what while I turn. Pretty simple. Right. So here's the chart. Follow along. But if I listen to the MIDI, I know that I know what octave it is. Sometimes, you know, when you're playing keyboards and it's like a guitar sample or something, it will transpose it. And so I have to listen to um, sometimes both the, the MIDI and the the, the demo. Okay, so and Austin always bounces, um, always bounces a, a, a mix of all the guitars, all of his sample guitars. So what I'm doing is I'm going into uh, my telly into a volume pedal, earning ball, 
volume pedal. I'm not using it, but I'm going to into a multi comp uh, EBS. Uh, see if I did that. Uh, I don't know, compressor just gives me a little more confidence sometimes. But basically, it's going into an API um, 512C, and then that's going into uh, my Apogee um, duet, just a duet, two channels. That's all I need. I never do more than, I mean, heck, I only do one channel now. So back when I used to use my big my rig, I would have a stereo out. But I'm using a uh, guitar rig here in Logic. It's actually a, a native instruments thing. Guitar rig. This is a Marshall amp. Frank's Marshall amp, basically. <laughs> Fun. And a little bit of reverb. Give it a little bit of uh, special sauce. There. Okay, so let me see. That was. Either my, my telly needs to be worked on or the strings are getting old. Um, so I'm going to tune up where I'm playing. I'm playing these notes. these notes. That's good. That's a little sharp. So I'm going to tune them. I call it tempered tuning. I'm tuning where I'm playing. Because as you get further up the neck, you know, you're very likely to not be as in tune as you were when you hit all the open strings. So what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll tune up here so that I know those notes are in tune. That's what I'm playing. And I'm only playing up there for this section. So and then I can tune for the next section. Takes more time to edit the MIDI so it's readable um, when it's in notation. Oh wait, I gotta I gotta bounce this name. Bounce is in bar one seventeen. So save audio file measure one seventeen. It's hot here in LA by the way. So not my I don't have the AC on, so I'm kind of getting warm, but I kind of like it that way. So it's it's havoc on the guitar. Now there's some more. If you you can see there's some more on the end of this chart. Um, so that means further down the tune, and it's not, this is a, for, by the way, if you're just joining us, <laughs> you're just joining, just now joining us, after these messages, uh, this is John Wick, the game, uh, this is the score for it I'm working on right now, and the composer is Austin Wintry, and he gave me permission to, to do this with you guys, to, oh, okay. <laughs> So this is interesting. Notes. What is this? Hard to read these notes. Oh, it's G. Okay. So it's. I'm going to turn down the input a little bit because so it's not too distorted. Last 
thing. It, I don't know if it's short or long. Let me, let me listen to what you did here. Oh, it's short. And it's two notes at once. Okay, so the MIDI got weird. Let's see if I can punch in. I'm going to try to punch in. I think I can. So I'm going to do this. One, two, three. Three, four. One, two, three. Simple as that. Okay, and then I'll just hopefully this will work. Let's see. I'm going to listen. I got to solo the track I just did. Listen to make sure. Because I. Merge, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chop off a, a little end just in case. Oh, there's not. Okay, there's nothing, so we're good. Okay, so I know got, I'm sure this is really boring. I'm sorry. Somebody, somebody asked me, "Hey, can, can we see a day in the life kind of thing?" <laughs> so that's what this is. Uh, and I don't even know if you can hear me when I'm not talking directly at it. I've got nine viewers. I'm just like burning up the internet here. Um, oh, you were about to ask the rig rent. Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, Jonah, what's going on, man? Kurt Bennett. No, I don't know. <laughs> I look like we, we look like each other fiscally. Let's see, uh, Randall, what are you asking? Hi, quick question. What microphone under $1,000 is good for recording? Acoustic guitar, I'll tell you what, uh, I've got a great one for that. I, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, it'll serve you really well. I have it. Um, thank you. Let, me, uh, let me bounce this first and then, we'll, then I'll send that. Uh, so if you measure 184, bounce, export files, measure 184. Mm -hmm. The mic I use mainly now, uh, probably for the last three or four years, is a Gefell uh, UTM 70S. And you can hear it in my last YouTube video. Um, I used it in that. Um, and they're about $1,600, $1,700. So they're a little pricey. But it's kind of one of those situations where I, I'll, I'll have the same mic for five years, and then I'll do some session where I you know, we record acoustic and I go into the booth and I hear it and I go, oh my gosh, it sounds so amazing. What did you, you know, what mic is that? I got to get one. And so that's what happens. And so I, I did a session and I just love the sound of that mic and everybody likes it. So I've, I've been using it a lot. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, I got to do some acoustic. Speaking of, I got to do some acoustic, but I can't do that while talking to you guys. Um, however, uh, and I'm, I'm going to have to sign off here in a minute. Oh, I've got some more seven spring stuff. What is that? Um, so done with the telly I put this away. So that microphone you've been waiting for me to tell you is, uh, I'll pull it out. Let's see. Okay. So it's an AKG and this is the one that they use. I use one of the mics we used it for uh, the Bieber sessions. When I work with Justin, the engineer really likes this. So it's a, a C451, okay, and it's backwards, sorry. AKG C451, uh, it's kind of a pencil mic. It's really, I think it's great for finger style. It's great for strumming. Um, you kind of put it at about 12th fret or 15th fret or even close to the sound hole, you can back it away. Uh, we would mic it about a foot away from the sound hole, right in front of the sound hole, and, and it got a pretty good sound if the guitar sounds good. Um, but also when we're doing the Beaver stuff, they would have like a U47 there um, and maybe another microphone, maybe three mics on the guitar. So like, I can't even breathe when I'm in the studio working on that stuff, let, let alone fart. If I were to fart, that would be like three microphones that would pick everything up. So, all right. So I'm going to sign off because I've got someone coming over to do some songwriting and then I'm going to finish this later tonight. But I, I can kind of see... Um, on my work where I have work still to do like here in this section I still got to do this and then I've got all this steel string stuff. Did I print all the steel string stuff? I don't know if I printed that. I did not. So I've got to print that up. In fact, why don't I do that? Show you how I do kind of do that. So th this 
it's a little bit of a pain. Um, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna slice it, open this up. So I hit six, uh, command six, and I can see the MIDI. And um, spread it out. And you can see, I don't know if you can see this. In fact, I'm gonna solo. I'm gonna mute this. I'm gonna solo, where is it? Oh, here it is, okay. <laughs> That's interesting. There's steel string here, but I'm not hearing it on his mix. So that's weird. Okay, let me go here. More steel string. Seeing it in the MIDI, but I'm not hearing it. There's what we just did. So I'm going to mute that. Okay, so I'm going to have to ask him if there is indeed steel string on this because um, I'm not hearing it. But what I would do is I would take these MIDI files and see the notes are really short. So I've got like a, a 16th note, two, two 16th note gaps, a 16th note, another 16th. So it's basically bump, 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 bump. But if I pull up the music version of it, um, you can see where it's on bass for some reason. Okay. So it's that's super complex to read with all those 16th note rests. You just don't, I don't want to look at that. That's just a mess. Okay, you see that? Uh, probably can't see that, can you? Yeah, so see all these 16th notes? So if if I know that, if I go to the same track, let's see, if I go to the same track, the MIDI of that, where is it? I go Command-3, or Command-6. You can pull up the MIDI of that, I think, if I do it right. i got to highlight the track. No, that's less ball. Oh, here it is. Okay. So Command-6. You can see these are short. Now watch. I'm going to change this. I'm going to highlight all of these. I'm going to highlight these. Uh, these two, for example, and I'm going to drag them out so that their value is a dotted eighth instead of a sixteenth. And then I'm going to change that to an eighth and that to an eighth. Now I'm changing the duration. I'm not changing the notes. Now if I pull up the, now you can see, okay, that I, I'm used to reading. That's normal notation. Dun, 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 dun. That I can read. And, it, and if I, I know that it was short, like if he had them as, 16th notes, he wants um, basically, hold on, I'll get my acoustic. Again, I'm not hearing it in the mock-up. I'm not hearing this acoustic guitar in the mock-up. So before I even track it, I'm going to make sure he wants it. This is what he wants. Now that written is, but, but I know that the notes were originally short. So, or however you make them short, that's what those, uh, that's what those are. Okay, so anyway, that's what I do, and that's really takes more time than tracking it. However, if I didn't do that work with the MIDI, then um, it would take longer to track because I'd be reading all these sixteenth note rests, and it would just get confusing. So, all right, um, let's see. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So I, I hope this wasn't too, <laughs> too boring. I saw I got like six people watching, two people watching, whatever. Uh, you guys, it, was a ten, it got up to 10. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is kind of my day. I mean, I do uh, most days I'm doing this. If I, like I'm working for somebody, I always say, if I'm not working for somebody, I'm working for myself. So uh, that I will also uh, do some video on that. Somebody asked me my process about writing um, music for television. So I'm going to do that. I can do no problem. I, Austin gave me permission to do this. I, I wanted to make sure it was okay that the world heard his music before um, it came out. So, and Austin's one of the greatest composers. He did, uh, he's the first game composer to be nominated for a Grammy. And he was nominated for the game Journey. I don't know if you know the game Journey, but the music on that is amazing. Now, I didn't work on that because it was orchestral. Uh, Tina Guo did the uh, cello on it. 
uh, and she and I work a lot with Austin. Um, but, uh, but the, um, uh, but I've worked on Austin on a, a dozen, dozens of movies and games. So we've worked on a lot of stuff together. Um, anyway, so you get to see a little bit of my process, my little studio here. It's all I need, just a little room to call my own. And I thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll post this, I'll, I'll leave it up so you can watch it again. Or if you, you know, want to scroll through it, I think others are going to want to watch it. So good to see you all. You all, uh, see, uh, Jonah, Patrick, Thomas, James, Randall. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.